Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. I'm Steve Orme, the Midlands editor of the British Theatre Guide. The main autumn 2016 production at Derby Theatre is Stephen Sondheim's musical Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. It's a co-production with Mercury Theatre Colchester and it'll transfer to the Essex venue after owning in Derby. It's being directed by Daniel Buckroyd, who is the artistic director of the Mercury Theatre. In the title role is Hugh Maynard, and Mrs Lovett will be played by Sophie Louise Dan. During rehearsals, they spoke about their roles, and Hugh Maynard said he hadn't thought too much about the responsibilities that come with being the first black actor to play Sweeney Todd in the UK. At this point, I'm just focusing on the material, and um, you know, which is huge in itself, and also comes with its responsibilities. But uh, I'm, I'm sure you know, once we're up and running, I might uh, uh, look back and think, wow, you know, but right now we're in such a, um, a mind-bending process of understanding Sondheim and his meaning of this piece that um, I've not really kind of um, taken that on board. So is it a part you wanted to play or even expected to play? <laughs> I can certainly say it's a part that I never, ever expected to play. And um, I still wake up in the morning thinking, me? <laughs> are you sure? Um, but it's a great challenge, it really is. And uh, it's fun, it's fantastic, and the team are amazing. So it must be a challenge lyrically, first of all, then? My goodness. Um, I think sometimes... I mean, people are, are raving about Hamilton, but this show really... Yeah, just leaves you speechless and tongue-tied. So, in what way is it, is it a challenge lyrically for you? Well, first of all, understanding, uh, again, the material and also trying to fit as many syllables into a bar as possible, uh, which seemed to be uh, Stephen's um, test on his performers. Uh, the pitching of notes... You know, the timing. Um, I found myself uh, singing Sophie Louise's lines when I shouldn't be. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm giving myself more work to do. Uh, but really, it's, it's a task to get on top of the material. It really is a tongue twister. But presumably you did enough in the audition to convince someone that you, you could actually play this role. Definitely. I think it was, um, again, the audition I didn't expect to be given the the title role, I thought perhaps um, a supporting role or something, but I I guess, well, I know now it's a case of being able to just open yourself to the material. Don't overthink it. Just read it, just sing it, just perform it. Yeah, it's it's not mind games. It's it's literally just being able to interpret uh, the material. Do you think Zondheim was a, a genius then? I think he is a genius. (laughs) And um, and if he's free and wants to come to uh, Derby and watch the production, I will welcome him with open arms. And um, I won't offer to give him a shave, but certainly welcome him with open arms. The role's been played by people like Michael Ball, Bryn Turfel on stage, Johnny Depp on film. So have you looked at those and uh, taken anything from them? I've had a look at a a few resources online, um, but I've been warded off the the film uh, version, Tim Burton uh, version. And uh, I'm sure, again, when we open, I'll look back and uh, maybe give myself a little sneak preview. I'll go online and um, see again, you know, Johnny Depp's, for example, in interpretation. But right now, it's a case of um, I've been asked to not look at you know, external resources and make Sweeney Todd my own. But have you seen it before at all? You know, just I haven't. No. Uh, in fact, um, when it comes to Sweeney Todd, I've I've since found out that when I auditioned, I had the least um, experience and information uh, regarding uh, uh, the piece and Stephen Sondheim. But I was the uh, one of the few that was able to really bring across um, the meaning of the piece. So what do you expect that you personally will bring to this role? That's a great question. I think just honesty. Um, I'm discovering new emotions and feelings. You know, that stillness uh, that that character has 
it's actually very difficult to keep still for me anyway you know I'm very active very sporty um, it's um, very much a psychological piece and you really have to um, think about what that guy must have gone through you know what Sweeney Todd must have gone through um, to be where he is in this present state uh, when the audience uh, first meets him as he uh, um, gets off the boat off the ship uh, in the docks of London how difficult is it to put yourself in, into a position like that? I mean, obviously, it's something you've never experienced before. It's really difficult, but with acting, um, what I enjoy the most is the research. So, for example, um, in fact, I couldn't tell you how long it would take to sail to Australia today, but back in the day, you know, um, in the period that we're playing, it would have taken between four and six months, um, depending on trade winds and again, which direction you're, you're travelling in. But certainly from London to Australia would have taken, again, four to, to six months. And that's a long time to stew in your f- feelings and emotions and your anguish and your any vengeance that this uh, Sweeney Todd must have had towards the Judge Turpin and the Beadle. So what experience have you had which will stand you in good stead for playing Sweeney Todd? Well, I've never sailed to Australia, but uh, <laughs> I've, I've flown. But... Um, I think it's a case of using that glorious thing, your mind, your imagination, reading um, other people's um, depictions, uh, listening to the director, for example, and the creative team. They all, again, have insights as to what they feel Sweeney Todd might be. But again, it's an open discussion. It's not, he is this person, he is that, he thinks this, and, and what have you. It's very much, you need to kind of read the script read any resources you can find, books online, uh, find some facts. Again, you know, the fact that it takes such a long time to voyage between the UK and um, Australia. You know, he was um, sentenced to life in Botany Bay. The mind boggles. It, it truly does. So when he comes back to London, you, you feel for him. But then he goes a bit too far. <laughs> I feel dirty laugh there, but yeah, he goes he goes a bit too far. But um, it's certainly uh, I do have the audience on my on my side, I believe, for quite some time. Yes. Is this time? Is this the first time you've worked with uh, Daniel on any production? It is. Yes, it's my first time working with Daniel. Uh, first time in Derby, and I've heard that the people of Derby love theatre, and so I truly feel they're going to love Sweeney Todd. So what do you make of the city so far? It's great. It's raining today. It's the first time it's rained here in a month. Um, But it's great. Uh, The shopping centre, the food, the people, just very friendly. And it's nice, you know, to come from a big city like London um, to a smaller city, you know, here in Derby and just be so welcomed. Apart from acting, you've uh, put out your first album, Something Inside So Strong. That's right, yes. So why did you decide to call it that? Um... I've had a, well, I'm sure we've all had trials of life. Um, I had a kind of a a difficult upbringing. And I guess people have always said to me, when are you going to make it? When are you going to be a success? Um, Not so much in the business or the industry, but in in life. And so when I was given the opportunity to, to create an album, I jumped at it, you know, literally both feet in the bucket. And it's an album with songs that have been chosen by family, friends, uh, fans, supporters. Um, The album title, Something Inside So Strong, really is about the inner self. And it's not about... You don't have to have, I don't know, been raised in care or been shipped off to Australia for a crime you didn't commit. (laughs) Sorry. Um, It's it's about everyone and, and anyone, you know, that has a sense of, of being and wants to achieve and can overcome and resilience. And so there are so many great tracks within the album um, that I feel are uplifting. So how did you get to make the album in the first place? It was a case of, uh, you know, drawing board, going online, asking people what, they, what would they like to hear, what song is special to you, has a meaning, what's that story uh, behind the song? Uh, for example, um, Radiohead um, created a song called Creep, and I was asked to sing this song, and I, and I, I went online. I thought, wow, that song doesn't even suit my voice. Um, I wrote back to um, uh, the person who asked me to, to sing this song. I said, well, you know, what's the story behind it? You know, I obviously can't tell you, but um, it touched me. 
And I thought, wow, I have to do this now. And, and I was very lucky working with a, a guy called Liam Holmes. And we started with just piano and voice. And then we went into a studio in Lincolnshire. Um, I commissioned a choir from Manchester. Um, it literally got bigger and bigger and bigger. So, you know, my bank account got lower and lower and lower. But the, the output, um, the... Oh, gosh, yeah, the soul behind the album is, is priceless. And it's, for me, you know, the Creep, I feel, is one of the um, most popular tracks on the album. Uh, it's in my own style. It's been rearranged, hopefully uh, not to the detriment of radio, Radiohead. And, um, yeah, it's one to listen for. That must be totally different from Sweeney Todd. <laughs> <laughs> very, very different. Uh, um, again, if, if you think about the song, you know, Something Inside So Strong, um, written by Labby Sifri, uh, it starts with, you know, the higher you build your barriers, the taller I become. Um, what's a barrier to you is different to what may be a barrier to me. But the fact that I'm the first black person to play Sweeney Todd has never been a barrier. It's not so much I've never dreamt about playing this role. The barriers we have are barriers that we build ourselves. So I truly feel if you work hard enough, you can overcome. It's nothing to do with money or economics. It's truly what's going on inside ourselves. So I've been given a fantastic platform um, to play this role of Sweeney Todd. And believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm going for it. You're also the, uh, the youngest performer to play John in Miss Saigon. So what did you learn from that Cameron Macintosh production? Wow. Um, another good question. I, I, I think, well, I think, I know that I'm the luckiest guy on the planet right now. Um, I've, I've always felt that way. Um, for example, when I auditioned for Miss Saigon initially, I was living in Sweden, and I was asked to audition for Miss Saigon and I, I feel, or certainly remember, recall uh, being told that I was too young. They're like people in the you know, uh, late 30s, 40s. I was 20-something at the time. And I listened to, the, uh, to an album. So my, my uh, a family in Sweden were like scrambling around trying to find you know, a recording of Boy Doi. And I think it's one of those uh, recordings you find in the back of a magazine, you know, the making of the musicals. And it was, it was quite dreadful. And so I, I sent a fax, as you do, back in the day, and I asked uh, Cameron if I could sing the song my way, uh, my own interpretation. So he said, yes, come along, flew to London. I was on stage. Um, he wanted me to start at the chorus. I sang the chord, and he stopped me straight there. And I thought, oh, Hugh, you've gone too far. You've done it. What have you done? And he came up onto the stage, uh, did Cameron, and he said, I want you to be our John. And I, I was like, are you kidding? I keep saying that to myself, are you kidding? And um, he said, I don't, I don't joke about these things. I want you to be our John. And that was in 2001. So it was great to play John from 2002 to 2004 on the UK tour and then come, come back again 10 years uh, on for the, um, for the West End uh, production of Miss Saigon. So really... If I've learned anything, it's, it, it truly is about life skills. So the difference between, let's say, 2004 production to the 2014, um, from John's perspective, is I've learned more about myself. Therefore, I'm able to portray more about what this character may be fe feeling and thinking back in 1973 uh, uh, Vietnam. You know, love, loss, relationships, just life in general. So as you grow, you mature. You seem to have packed a lot into uh, a short space of time. Well, I am 86, so I'm, do I'm doing quite well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, how did you get the part of Mrs Lovett? How did I get the part? Um, I was asked to go and meet the creative team, which is uh, generally how it happens. And um, I went in and met Daniel and Cressida, who's our lovely movement director, and Michael Haslam, who is... Uh, a genius, <laughs> our musical director, who had worked on um, the only production that I've ever seen, which was with Julia McKenzie and Alan Armstrong at the National Theatre, way, way back. Um, and, uh, yes, it was a very interesting meeting. So, Mrs Lovett, um, 
one of the, uh, the really great parts to play. So what will you bring to that, to that particular role? It's interesting. Um, it's one of those roles that... I mean, when I'm, I'm always asked in interviews, oh, what, what roles do you want to play? And I always sort of firmly say, well, I'm an ambassador for new work and I love to create roles, but if there is one that's in the canon, it's Marjorie Lovett. And I can't wait to inhabit her. I mean, big shoes to fill. There have been some heavyweights done this role recently, Imelda Staunton, of course, but I'm, I would like to think... I'm going to pay homage to the great dame herself, Angela Lansbury, who was the original. Uh, so there might be uh, glimpses, uh, nods to, to Dame Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it such a good role, then? Uh, it, it is a supporting role, but they, they are equal. It's, it's not often you actually get... Um, female protagonists that are, are equal in the in the action. I mean, for all, Sweeney does it, but she really is the, the brainchild behind it. Um, and she saw, it, it's interesting because when when this was written, it was 1979, and we uh, in England at that time were. It was the first year that Margaret Thatcher was um, voted in. And I just think there are echoes of uh, economy, female, capitalism, power, girl power, but also women surviving in in a man's world. That's a bit deep. But there are echoes of that. And I mean, amongst that, there. uh, I mean, let's just talk about the... um, We'll talk about it in a minute, I'm sure. But the complexity of the score um, and the lyrics... um, yeah, I inhabit is the word I'm going to use for Mrs. Lovett, not play. <laughs> so what's your impression of Sondheim? Uh, he's a master. He really is. Um, I have had experience with the great man um, on the other side of the channel, the English channel. I was uh, in, uh, lucky enough to play Dot and another wonderful piece of his, Sunday in the Park with George in Paris, which was wonderful because it is all about the, the picture. And that's ostensibly a love story uh, within a, a huge canvas, pardon the pun. And I, I think this has echoes of a love story. The thing is with Mrs. Lovett, she's, she's desperate. She's a lady of a certain age and she's clearly held a torch for this man who has come back broken. And so I think what's fascinating is to, for all the the comedy and the, um, how shall we say, the the caricature that could come across from her, um, I think it's more interesting to try and pull the the heartstrings a little bit, see if they can, see if they, if if the audience empathise with this woman in the situation she finds herself in. And do you think they'll do that? I hope so. (laughs) I'm not doing my job. (laughs) um, Daniel, that Buckroyd, our director, is very deftly guiding us through. And it's the old adage of, we know the story, but our job is to tell the audience every night the story for the first time. You've appeared in productions such as Hairspray at uh, oh, yes, Curve, just, well. just down the road in just Leicester. Down the road. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Just say what fabulous facilities that everybody has in, in, in the provinces. It's really great to see. And having been um, at Derby before, in various guises, I'm delighted to come back and, and hear that they've got the Arts Council funding back again and give the theatre back to the people. Has Derby changed since you were last here? Yeah. The shopping centre, I remember the shopping centre when we were here was just opening. And it was sort of all big kind of hoardings and canvas. And and, and it was very exciting to see what shops were coming. Well, they're all here now, so I've spent my fee already. (laughs) Going back to your experience, you've you've been in productions such as Bend It Like, Beckham, Made made in Dagenham. Dagenham. Did did they prepare you for the role of Mrs Lovett in any way? Mm, 
interesting. Barbara Castle, I played the MP, another fierce powerhouse of a woman, so maybe she'll sneak into Mrs. Lovett. But I don't think the um, this sort of yummy mummy <laughs> invented <laughs> like Beckham <laughs> appears anywhere. But it's interesting, I mean, I'm often sort of known as a bit of a chameleon, so it's just a different hat. It's just mm-hmm. a different hat to put on, mm-hmm. but a great one, a great one. You're also known, if I could quote, uh, one of the West End's most talented divas. So, yeah, wh- who said that? So, wow. Well, I'll take, how do, I'll take how do you that. write something like that? I'll take that. I think uh, I, w- I was fortunate enough to um, play an operatic diva called Diana Devane. She was quite, quite the character in Lend Me a Tenor, the musical. And I think that's where maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that phrase might have cottoned on. But I, I, I um, as I say, I love to do new work. I really do. Because if we don't move on and progress and introduce audiences to new material, we, we, we live in a bit of a museum society. That's not to say that there is absolutely room for great pieces of theatre. But it, it, I tend to, if I'm in London, like to do something new. You mentioned Lend Me a Tenor yeah. there. You were actually nominated for an Olivier Award for Best Performance in a Supporting Role. Indeed. Yeah. Um, they're funny things, aren't they, award ceremonies? I mean, I always say that it's like you have to put your theatrical armour on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, as, as Hugh said, we do a job. And I'm fortunate enough to love what I do. And if people are, are kind enough to notice that and want to nominate me for something, I'm very, very grateful. But it's what makes me tick at the end of the day. Back to Sweeney Todd then, and you get the chance to perform it both in Derby and Colchester. So. I know, it's fabulous. We're going on a mini tour. <laughs> it's brilliant. And I, I'm really, I love Derby. I know Derby and I know... Kedleston Hall and Chatsworth. I'm sure there'll be a couple of day trip company trips, um, but I don't know Colchester, so I'm looking forward to to uh, having a look around the city. Very Roman, I believe. Mm. Yeah. But you don't know the theatre at all, there. I don't know the theatre, no. But again, um, I know that it has a great following and a great um, dedicated audience. So we hope they come and see us for a great night out. Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street is at Derby Theatre from Friday the 30th of September until Saturday the 22nd of October. It then transfers to the Mercury Theatre Colchester from Wednesday the 26th of October until Saturday the 12th of November. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.